guys, welcome back to Keep It 99, the most edifying podcast in the world. And I'm joined here today with Mark Shenuda. Thank you for coming on the podcast, of course. Mark. So uh, just a little bit about you. Uh, you're a punter for the University of Memphis. Yes, sir. Um, had a very successful high school career. Mm-hmm. You're all state. Yeah. Led the state in punt pun, average. In punt average. Yeah. That's insane. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to have you on. And, of course. Uh, Thanks for having yeah. me. It's, it's a blessing to have you on. So my first question for you is what got you into football? So growing up, all my life I played soccer. Love soccer. I thought that was what I was going to do for the, for the majority of my life. And uh, middle school, uh, my brother, my older brother actually got me into it. And uh, his friend just, like, we were all just kicking a soccer ball. He saw that, you know, my brother was kicking it, like, pretty well. And uh, he, he asked them, the, our, our middle school needed a kicker. So he asked him, like, to come try out. My brother does it, and uh, he gets pretty good at it, gets involved in it. And uh, look, I've always looked up to my older brother. So what he did, I wanted to do. So uh, the next year, I, I actually joined as well. My, my eighth grade year was the first year uh, I started playing. And uh, it was rough at first. Uh, I wasn't as good as my brother, but uh, I, I held to it, stuck, stuck onto it. And uh, the rest is history. I went on my freshman year. I, I played my, my freshman year, uh, sophomore year. I, Played played three games and then like I I, I quit but uh, there's a long story behind that but uh, I got back into it my junior year and uh, had pre- had a pretty well pretty good year uh, I was all state my junior year senior year was really when I exp- like my my ranking and my national status started like going up uh, I went to my first like ranking camp and uh, thank God I, after that camp I, I was ranked uh, sixth in the nation so uh, after, after that i knew like you know this could take me somewhere yeah that was really impressive uh like uh, at any sport any level to like achieve such a high um like ranking position like that is of course like it's a very hard thing to do and it's like it, it's it's a very, very cool thing as yeah. well so i just kind of wanted to ask you like what are some of the things that go into the day-to-day like work that you put in in order to gotcha. maintain that athletic level yeah so every day you know if I'm not kicking, I'm either working out or a big thing is stretching. Uh, so even on the weekends when I'm back home or on vacation or whatever, I, I have to find time to at least stretch because that's like one of the most important things in plenty. But uh, besides that, you know, I got to gotta find time to do like my school work and things I, I, I enjoy doing and uh, just trying to, trying to balance everything. So – Outside of the schoolwork and the, and the athletics, how do you kind of balance your spiritual life um, between all those things? Gotcha. Uh, during the season, it was it was very challenging for me. Uh, I rarely went to uh, Sunday like church on Sunday liturgy, and I had practice at 9 a.m. in the morning, and I talked to my uh, my priest about it, and you know he gave me some good advice, and he ended up uh, having liturgy on Friday. So after after practice, after I got my school work done, uh, they had like a, a night litter, not a night thing that I could attend, and uh, thank you for that. And I had to do that for a couple months until the season ended. What do you think has been the biggest challenge for you being a student athlete um, in like your first semester of college? Yeah, uh, first semester of college, uh, it really hit me. It, uh, it's a lot different than high school, you know, workout wise, the the practice wise. Just, Everything's a lot faster and a lot harder. Uh, my my first semester, which is considered like the summer semester, because I, I had to enroll early. Uh, the first week, uh, probably one of the hardest weeks of my life. Uh, everything was going just too fast for me. It's nothing like I experienced before, but uh, I quickly adapted to it, and uh, you know, I, like. After after the summer semester, when we actually got into the season, uh, I, sh- I struggled a lot, and uh, you know I, I kept my faith like a part, a part of the process, and uh, I just it, that's what really got me through like the beginning of it. Yeah, I feel like to be honest, um, with a lot of uh, like athletes that I've talked to, it's the hardest thing to do is to realize that, like, is to realize that you actually need to do all these things outside of your sport. Because a lot of times, like in high school, 
your sport was the way of like detaching yourself from other things. Yeah. Whereas now it's kind of like the opposite where your sport is now, it's not, it's not a hobby anymore, but it's more of like a job. It's more of like, you know, you have to come and you got to do the work. You got to um, put the effort in. So it kind of makes it, it kind of tr transitions from being something you kind of like do for fun into more of like, this is your main thing. You have to find other things for fun. Yeah. So what are some things that you've found to kind of, you know, maybe other things instead of like football to, you know, keep yourself. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would agree with it is a job. It, it's long hours, uh, stressful hours, but, uh, outside of football, uh, I mainly try to, I mainly just try to like be around a, cer a certain type of people that like I want to be around. Obviously my friends and, uh, I go, I go to, ch I try to go to church as much as possible. Uh, the youth group down in Memphis, uh, they're, they're, they help a lot. Just clearing my mind, just take, taking a step back from football and, you know, doing that. And obviously I, I play, the, play on, the, on the game. You know, I just call my boys up, you know, hop on a Madden game, play some Fortnite, you know. Yeah, of course. I think it's very important to have those, like, mental breaks um, <coughs> from just your day-to-day -day things. Um, so I kind of wanted to ask, moving more specifically into um, – your performance on the field how do you kind of prepare yourself uh for you know performing at your best mm -hmm. would you say yeah uh like a normal game uh i would start i would always start like a week before you know it's the hydrating you know the stretching the like getting mentally prepared for it uh now at this level it's i would say it's more mental than it is like technique and uh like a the mental part of it can can be a big uh, a big aspect of it. Uh, I try during the week, you know, I, I try to focus like in the moment. I try to focus on like what I'm doing, and uh, I just try to repeat that, you know, when, whenever it gets time to game time. Uh, I always try to be in the moment, in the present. I feel like that helps me a lot. And uh, as soon as my mind starts wandering off, that's you know that can start impacting my, my like my playing ability and stuff so just, just being locked into the, the present so how exactly do you do that how exactly do you like stay focused on the present uh my routine is when i'm running onto the field uh i count i count six numbers down so for planning on the 20 i've count 25 30 35 40 45 50 55 or 45 and uh that by that time uh the cadence the, like the, the play is about to, about to happen so that keeps me I feel like that keeps me locked in to like the, the moment and I, like I, it, it helps me from not wandering off and uh, that just what I found is successful for me are there any ways like maybe in the pregame or in your preparation throughout the week that kind of help you kind of focus your mindset a little bit more onto the uh, onto the game yeah uh, I, I do the same routine every week I have, a, I have the same the, during the season. It's basically the same thing, uh, down to like my when I do my schoolwork or when I go to sleep. Uh, but yeah, when, Wednesdays is a punt day, so Wednesdays and Fridays are the only day I punt besides the game. And uh, I just have a, a routine I go through, like going to, all the way down to my warm up. I hit the same amount of balls during during the live period. I hit the same amount of balls, and then after after live period, I'm done for the day. Like. I do usually I just go and stretch hit the tubs you know get my body prepared for it you're talking about like being mentally prepared and how uh the oh how the mental side of, of of the of the game is more um is more potent in in college versus high school yeah. why do you think that is uh pressure pressure is a, is a big thing I think pressure is a, a privilege and uh, mm. that's that's like you know they say pressure makes diamonds uh, I, just, I just feel like people, they could fold in pressure. I mean, a lot of people fold in pressure, but, you know, I, you take them moments and you learn from it. And uh, during, like, a, a high school game, uh, it's more of, like, we're doing this for fun. Like, yeah. you know, just just go, like, have fun. Uh, in college, it's more of a business. You know, you, you mess up a couple of plays, boom, backup's in. So, you, like, you're telling yourself, like, you can't mess up, you can't do this, and that's where you get into your head. Because the more you think about being perfect, is more likely you're gonna mess up. So just going out there and uh, 
and doing what like what what you've been practicing for the past years. You just let your body do what it remembers how to do, and that's usually uh, that's that's what I shoot for. So. Yeah, and you were talking a little bit earlier about um, uh, like the routine and how important like to you like having your routine is, and I think that goes beyond just sports and just um, like being an athlete. Sports, yeah. And in general in life, I think I think like even for myself, like the hardest part about adjusting to college was was the routine because it's not like high school where you wake up at this time, school's from this to this, you go home, homework. Like there's no like there's no rhythm in college. It's kind of you have to you have to create your day. Um, in advance. You know, just exactly. You just have to kind of create it as it goes, and you know, in advance and plan. Because like on Monday you have class at nine, Tuesday you have class at two, so you gotta like yeah. you know figure everything out. So I've I've I feel like finding the routine and putting the effort in at the beginning of the semester or like before you enter in order to kind of plan how you're going to do everything, I think is extremely important. I think it's something we forget. And then I also think that continues into like spirituality yeah. where in order to have, be spiritually successful, you have to have a spiritual routine. So it can't just be like, Oh, whenever I'm going to do it. Like you have to like yeah. be, um, you have to, what's the word? You have to be, um, Proactive. Yeah, proactive. You have to like put the effort in. You can't just you, you know just pick when you want. Yeah, you can't just like yeah, put it to the side. Yeah. So I was gonna lead into my next question, which is um in your preparation to for your sport, how does spirituality play a factor if it does? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it does big time. Uh you know, whenever I, I always talk to myself a lot, like like before a rep or just before like before games, after games, like I Talking like self talk is a big part of what I do, and uh, something that's been said to me that really stuck with me is what you do in the dark will shine in the light. So that like you know whenever I'm by myself, like when no one's with me, and like I, I gotta still be like focused on whatever I'm doing. I can't like be messing around and stuff. If I'm messing around when no one's watching, how am I like how am I gonna perform when someone is watching? So, uh, yeah, I just think, I'm blanking. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a really good point um, that, like, you have to be this, I think that goes more of, like, you have to be the same person everywhere. Exactly, yeah. You know, you can't live, like, a, a double, yeah. like, a double-sided life or, um, even in your sport, like, you can't just, like, show, because, like, especially when you get to, like, co- collegiate level, there's so much work that's done outside of the of, of practice oh, and outside sure. of um, like what the team would do. Mm-hmm. So you have to keep that same work, work ethic and that same showing of of pride in your team when you're there as when you're not there. Yeah. You know, by yourself doing your own work. Um, so yeah, I do think I do think it's a very important distinction. Um, so I'm kind of interested, like what is like the day to day, like what, like as, as for like a yeah. you know D1 co- college athlete. Yeah. So. Right now, it's uh, not as bad as in season, but uh, I would say Tuesdays and Thursdays are my most challenging days. Uh, I wake up at 4:30. Oh my god! Yeah, it's it's bad. Uh, and uh, you know, I try to get there at least an hour before, like whatever we do. And uh, sorry, why? I, uh, just like prepare myself for what we're about to do. You know, I do the the hot tub, the cold tub. Uh, I stretch. Uh, I eat breakfast there. So, you know, just, wow. Yeah, it's just that's so that's it's hard to take my time different. with it. But uh yeah, we have uh by by six, we're on, out on the field. Uh it's it's only like an hour long, but it's it's a lot of like team competitive stuff and uh it's a lot of like like agility and speed work and a lot of cutting movements, so it def- definitely takes a toll on your body. But after that we get done around seven, seven thirty ish, uh I eat breakfast. Uh, after I'm done with breakfast, I go home, just chill for like about an hour or two, and then I have to come back at 10. Uh, I do basically do the same thing, warm, get warm up, get stretched up, get stretched out, and uh, work out. So I start at 11, and uh, yeah, we work out. We usually do uh, either conditioning or speed work in the beginning, 45 minute-ish, and we work out for about an hour 15. And after that, I'm basically free, free for the day. Man, that's the pack schedule, my God. Yeah. This is sort of always, like, I can never understand about student-athletes, especially, like, student-athletes at, like, at, like Georgia Tech. Because mm-hmm. like, I go there, yeah. 
and it's like my course load and like my work. I'm like, I, there is no way these student yeah. athletes do all of this. Yeah. Like I mean, it's impossible. They they do have a mandatory study hall. Oh really? Yeah. So about an hour. I mean, I'm sure, good student about an hour a day, and uh, you just go in there, and all that's on your phone. You just basically knock out as much as you can, and uh, if you're behind, you, they make you stay in there until you get it done. So that really helps us. It was good that they make you guys do that. I feel like, uh, like I think it'd be it's good because like it's it's good when you study and there's people around you that are also doing mm-hmm. the same thing, especially people who like you're friends with and that. Yeah. Um, like you enjoy being around. It so could get cool. distracting though. Of course. of course, of course. There's a lot of people you know. You're, you're putting a ton of football players in a room. Yeah, talking about study. Yeah, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. <laughs> That's funny. So, what are you studying? Uh, finance. Uh, finance. Yeah. Anything like specific in finance? Uh, no. I mean, I came into college not knowing what I want to do. Uh, I know fi- my dad's in real estate, and kind of kind of like what he do- he's doing. So, uh, finance is just very broad. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see where, where God takes me. That's cool. Man. That's cool. It's great. I feel like um, I have a question, like a hypothetical for yeah. you. Yeah. Let's say, um, what would you consider like a really good academic school? Like top of the, like top tier? Uh, probably an Ivy League school. Princeton, okay, so we're, okay, so we're going, we're going, we're going big time. So let's say you get accepted into Princeton. Yeah. But then you also have this football offer at Memphis. What are you doing? So I actually had an offer to Princeton. Uh, oh, yeah. You had an offer to Princeton? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, I got in. Uh, obviously, football helps a lot with getting yeah. to schools like that. But. Uh, well, man, look at that hypothetical. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just when I got my options, uh, at the time, I thought Memphis was the right decision. You know, it's it's a lot bigger football. It's competitive. Like the, the competition's a lot, uh, like a lot better. But. Uh, Looking back at it right now, uh, I don't know if I would make the same decision, but, you know, I, I, I trust this plan. Yeah, I mean, of course, I'll like, see. of course, like, you make decisions, and at that point, like, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, that's, that's actually really cool. Yeah. Um, so what what exactly made you pick Memphis over something like Princeton? Oh, uh, yeah, so the plan was I, I go in, uh, so they actually brought in a transfer in my freshman year, and uh, he's a really good, really good dude, Reed Bauer. Uh, he played at Arkansas his past five years, and he played as a as a freshman. He, he's a, I, I, the reason I chose him is uh, I wanted to go in and learn behind him. He did te- teach me a lot, and uh, you know it's it's something that I'm grateful for. Uh, I, and I do believe that that'll help me out in the long run. So, do you see punting becoming like like an NFL career? or Not really. Uh, it, it's very challenging, very very challenging to do. But if the opportunity presents itself. I'd love to take it. I'd love to. So you think like that's where we're shooting at least. Okay, so that so that is your goal. That's the goal, yeah. So at that end of the day, that's kind of why you picked Memphis because you feel like that was better for that yeah, goal yeah, than yeah. Princeton obviously would have been. Yeah, it's a lot more exposure. It's mm. a lot better football. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah. It just I always find it interesting because I feel like at some point, if you're not gonna reach that level, you have to realize it, mm-hmm. and it's like at some point you just have to make that decision. Like, okay, now it's not worth it anymore. Yeah. You know, obviously, you think it's still worth it, which is great. All power to you. I hope even you, I hope you get there. Even though, if that's if I never reached that the NFL, I I would never trade it. Uh, I feel like it's taught me like many things in life that yeah. that I need to learn. I, I believe that you know football is a is a good like teaching of course thing in life. Of course, you know, teaching me a lot of a lot of things that could help me in the future with, mm-hmm. with jobs and anything. Uh, yeah, I do believe it'll, it'll yeah. end up eventually be worth it. I feel like playing collegiate level, a uh, collegiate level sport in general, helps you with so many things like work ethic, yeah. you know, discipline. I mean, you gotta wake up at four thirty a.m. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, like it helps you with a lot of with a lot of things. So I think at the end of the day, it's a win. Mm-hmm. But then there comes a point where it's like, where do you make that decision? Where okay, this is a real thing. I'm going pro yeah. versus like okay, maybe I need to prioritize other things. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, that's that's interesting. So right now it's still like that's your. That, yeah, that's the goal. Like, you know, I, I try to be in the present more than anything. Uh, of course. I try, yeah. Yeah, I Sorry, to, I don't, don't uh, want to bring no, it you're in. Good, you're good. Uh, I try not to look in the future, but, uh, you know, I just take it one day at a time. And, you know, as long as I'm better than I was yesterday, that's that's the goal every day. Yeah, I think it's a great mindset to have, not just obviously with football, but in general. I think always, like, being better than the person you were yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's so cliche, yeah. and it's like, oh, we say whatever, but it's like actually doing that and believing that, living that out. Yeah is super powerful because it really allows you to 
um, you know, force, it, it's not like force yourself, but it really allows you to realize that, you know, it's about the baby steps. It's about being 1% better than you were the day before. It's not about these big things. We always look at these huge milestones, like going D1, going pro, yeah. but there's so many things in between that. Oh, yeah. So many things leading up to that, mm -hmm. that are, you know, if not as important, more important than the actual like achievement itself. I yeah. agree, yeah. That's all I have. If you have anything else you want to add. I'm all good. Well, that's perfect timing because that thing just turned off. So we're going to outro on this one. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. And see you guys next week. Thank you.